Hey friends, this is Brian, and it's part two of pulling the engine tonight. Um, yeah, so I focused on removing the engine mounts in the first video, and now this is the video where I'm going to separate the transmission and pull the damn engine. I've owned this Jeep for a month. It is a co-part salvage project. I'm going to rebuild it. I'm going to get it roadworthy again, and then I'm going to build a Jeep that I've always wanted to have. So it's going to be a lot of fun. Um, and I picked this Jeep specifically for the commodes it had. I wish it was a Rubicon, but it's not. It is what it is. I don't really need a Rubicon. We really don't have rocks in Houston to crawl on, so it's all good. So, uh, you want to know more about the tools I'm using, the extensions, the universal joint, and the e-torx uh, setup, uh, check out the other video on tools. And what we're going to do is we're going to get under here and get after it. So, I'll be back in a minute. Um, I'm going to move my 20 volt DeWalt lights back to the back and uh, then I'm going to get myself down there and I'll turn the camera back on from there. So if you're wondering what it's like without these DeWalt lights, well, here you go. Um, it gives you a chance to see that it's really dark in here without these lights. Now with the lights, I can throw a whole lot of light where I need it, which makes it a lot easier to work. So I'm going to put light up on both sides of this transmission. And I'm going to get a flashlight because I like some fixed light. I'm right back. Oh, man, this garage is cramped. Ah. So the other thing I'm going to do is I'm going to lower the front of the engine to give myself a little more working room. So that's good enough right there. So that gives me a lot of working room underneath uh, to get to these bolts. Hey, what the transmission mount is really something else. All right. Wow. That's a lot of room up there. So it is 36 inches from the front to the back. And with a couple of, let's see if we could do this different. All right, so. So there's one, and we're gonna take that bolt out and set it on the side, and then we're gonna switch sides. Now this one's harder because I can't see it from the side. So I've got to do this one by feel. Thank you. 
<coughs> so the particular series of problems I'm having is I can't sit up under here and it's hard for me to see because I can't get my head angled in here. You guys can't see anything either because I bumped the camera. Let me stop and see if I Transmission dipstick is right in the way along with the wiring harness for what you need to be able to see back here. And you just can't get to the bolt from this side. Again, you know, they put these together before they install them. So Jeep don't give a shit. Um, the lower bolt's really easy to get to. That's not a big deal. Hopefully we will not destroy the crankshaft position sensor, but if we do, we do. And there it is there. I can feel it, but I can't, I, I really honestly can't see it. So I'm going to gamble on the care replacement. Just bear with me. Don't get all aggravated at me for the shitty camera placement. <clears throat> all right, so. All right, I gotta rest for a second because, yeah, this hurts my hands and it's hard to lever myself up here. <sighs> Piece of shit, come on. There we go. Yeah, so you guys have lost it too. Hang on, I'm gonna get you all out of there. I think I can find a way to get the camera. All right, so I've taken the swivel off to see if I can, because uh, I'm having problems getting the swivel to stay aligned. 
and unfortunately that is the best camera angle I can I can do under here and even that's gonna suck <clears throat> all right so I can get a straight shot on here So, I'm going to turn the ratchet around and see if I can get the ratchet up in here. Oh, man, this hurts my hands. All right. I've got to get a, something to break it with. I'll be right back. I hope this saved them a whole bunch of 50 cent pieces because this is a pain in the ass. And I'm sure every... Every Jeep mechanic must hate this. <clears throat> what the fuck are these things torque to? <clears throat> I don't know, but I can't get them loose. Let me get something bigger. Fucking A.
swear I should have pulled. <clears throat> I swear I should have pulled the damn engine and transmission together, but I didn't. I guess I technically still could, but I'm down the road of separating them, so that's what I'm going to do. So I'm using a torque wrench because it's got a longer handle on it. And it's the only 3 8 that I have. So apparently that was it. That broke it loose and now it's really loose. Now where did that damn, there it is, the power ratchet. Save my hands. loose so I'm gonna go up there and just reach for the stupid thing God damn it. Got it. Intermission. Okay, so the first thing's gonna happen is we're gonna break these loose. We're not gonna actually take both of them out until they're loose. Y'all won't be able to see me break this one loose. It looks just like the other one. All right. So now that they're loose, I'm going to go ahead and take them out.
All right, ouch. And if you're curious, I know you are, you're otherwise you wouldn't be watching. I'm using that swivel adapter and my impact, uh, 3 8 impact wrench. All right, so now we're gonna pull it out. So that's the setup I was using for those bolts. We'll just set it there for the moment. And this should just pop out. Uh, it's gonna have to go down some. Not quite that some. All right. Oh, how convenient. This wiring harness is bolted to the back of the engine. What a stupid fucking place for it. All right, so we are clear and free except for this, which I think we can get this loose. Let me get a screwdriver. And I'm going to just see if I can open this. Why can't this shit just make sense? Stupid fucking connectors and clasps. Not a goddamn one of them is the same. All right, there's that. It's just like, no wonder they can't make any fucking money. I mean, you know, you don't make any two connectors the same on your vehicle. So the trick to these is to slip the screwdriver down inside the little catch and that frees it. I'm going to have to climb up on that one. Oh my God, what a pain in the ass. It's like they never expect you to take this shit apart. Fuck. 
surely all this shit does not have to be fastened to the back of the engine. Got one more. Bolt back here. Let me go wash my hands. All right, so we got one more ground strap that I didn't see. It's 15 millimeter apparently. I just don't understand all this bullshit. These things are so hard to work on. Okay, now where were we before we were so irritatedly distracted by bullshit from FCA engineers who have their head up their ass? Okay, I think we are clear for takeoff. really wish I'd had this thing running before I had to pull this engine. I could have gotten 50 pounds of grease off of it. free and clear to take off so we are going to like I'm stuck on something but I'm not I'm just rubbing this is gonna be a pain in the ass to put back in I'll tell you that right now least of the reasons it's going to be a pain in the ass is I'm just really short on space. I need about 10 feet in front of this vehicle that I don't have. So y'all can laugh at this. I will move the camera over here so you can see this kind of bullshit that I'm trying to pull off. <clears throat> I 
and I do mean this is going to be a pain in the ass to put back in. No need to grease this up any more than possible needed. So the problem is I'm spinning a little bit and these need to be over. So I wasn't quite in the right spot. And again, I need about another 10 feet here that I don't have. Clearly wherever Jeep works on this, they must have a football field to take the engine out because it appears to need that much space. Oh, wait a second, I see something tugging. Another goddamn fucking ground strap? How many are there? This one's for the hood. Uh, sorry, you guys can't see it, but there's a ground strap on the hood, too. And if I'd removed the hood, I would have known this, but I, I just was trying not to. I don't see a reason to pull the hood. Other than this. There, now the piece of shit's loose. Okay, this is infinitely easier when it is not quite as high. Now I find out all, all the wheels swivel. God damn it. That would have been nice to know about 10 minutes ago.
All right. Woo! It's out. Get out. And it did. One major pain in the ass accomplishment down. It's time for a selfie. I gotta tease all my Facebook friends because they won't be able to believe that I did it. <laughs> All right, got one. All right, so let's look at the damage. So on the side of the engine, we sheared off two uh, engine mounts pretty damn good. I don't think we did any other damage to the block. Uh, might have a little bit of thread left in that, but nothing to count on. We got one broken bolt there. And boy, that brown dog engine mount is going to really earn its keep. There's one, two, probably three, four, five, six. I, I, yeah, I guess one, two, three, four. So those have got to be the four that he's talking about using. One, two, three. And then I would think that's four. Uh, I don't know. I have to message him and find out. And man, we got more oil leaks than a Iranian oil tanker. And then it looks like we've got some damage up here. Uh, I can't really see this holding the camera, but you know, it took an impact here. So I need to take a good look at that. But the headers, other than the fact they look tiny, they, they're not bad. Where the hell is oil coming from up here? I guess it's a valve cover. What an icky, nasty ass fucking gasket. It's gotta be valve cover, because that's the only thing high enough to put oil all over this. Um, And then, I guess the only way to see back here is to take this uh, flywheel off. But man, I hate to do that. I don't know. We'll see. Uh, I got to determine what I got going on here to see if I need to. Because, I mean, I can see all the oil leaking around here. Um, but that is not today's project. Um, yeah, I guess it's that flywheel is going to have to come off here in order to... Um, mount this to an engine stand but again that's not today's project today's project is done so let's look at the jeep so here is the frame damage and it's it's pretty healthy it's pretty healthy so we got a bent sway bar or track bar um but i i really think this is repairable and the deal i made with the frame shop is i would pull the engine out to give them access so they could get in and work their magic uh, let me see how far that transmission has dropped, because it sure looks like it's dropped down in the front. Oh, and it sure did. So let me get a strap for that. Uh, and I'll just run a strap underneath there. Do that right now. All right, so there we are. That's a little looser than I like it. Oh, really?
God damn it. This is really a two person project right here. But I'm gonna get it done by myself. The exact angle is not important. This is just to keep it from going anywhere because I've got to tow it over to the body shop. And again, that ain't gonna be a big deal. At this point, vamanos, vamanos basar. All right, out trash, out. So, you know, it's ready to go to the shop and get wrinkled or get the uh, wrinkle pulled out of the frame. And I could not be more excited to reach this point because it's been a long month. Uh, I really need to pull this jack shaft out of the way, but you know, I don't see a whole lot that's salvageable here. So I don't know that it really fucking matters if um, the body shop damages the jack shaft any more than it already is. So, you know, we got a good bend in here. No, no two ways about it. There is a good bend in the frame. But again, I think it'll come out. I don't think it'll be a big deal. Might need to weld some reinforcement on here uh, in this area on both sides. We'll burn that bridge when we get to it. I mean, what are we what are we looking at here so yeah that's a pretty complex bend but again I, I i i believe this can be straightened um and i know there'll be a bunch of you that make all sorts of nonsense comments of oh you can't do this fca yeah fuck chrysler in the ass that's what that stands for um you know they probably say you can't cut the frame in half and weld on a bunch of foreign metal um, to reinforce it when it rusts out because they were stupid about where they put drain holes. And the thing that's great about this Jeep is there's just not a whole lot of rust on it. And that makes it worth saving. Um, so thanks for watching. I hope you enjoy the video. Please follow along. We're going to do great things with this Jeep. And uh, this is just the beginning. Uh, and yeah, this is a keep busy project for me. So I don't mind that it took me a month of spare time to uh, get the engine out.